Hello. Hello and welcome to Journeys in Design, online design hub. My name's John Ennis, curator and producer at Journeys in Design, coming to you from Edinburgh. It's Friday, it's four o'clock, so we're here to talk rainbow cultures over a cup of tea, and I'm delighted coming through from Delhi in India today to talk colour and culture in India is Anna Sahu. Anu, hello. Hi, John. Thank you for reaching out to me. No, it's, it's so lovely to see you again and um, be back in contact. I've been yeah. lucky to visit uh, India twice. In 1998, I was in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. And actually, the first time I visited a textile museum, mm -hmm. Calico Museum. Beautiful. And I, I picked up so much about the culture of cloth production and textile trade in India, which is obviously um, a thousand years old. Uh, long before um, Britain ever had contact with, with the continent. And right. 2014, to your yes. wonderful family home, um, yeah. I, have, I have very fond memories, and you, in particular of your parents, parents-in-law, um, your mother, an amazing cook. All yes. the, no, no meat in the kitchen for 30 years. Amazing. And far from deli belly, as the tourists say, I had... My bowels were working better than ever before when I came home from that holiday. <laughs> and I remember your father-in-law and I remember walking early, early in the morning, just after dawn in the local park, a uh, parkland in, in the artist yeah. area that you're, you're based in. And that was great. Kind of, it was a beautiful, calm, meditative way to start the day. So thank you very much. Please, please pass on my best to them as well. No, yeah, sure. We're all managing this uh, unusual situation across the world at the moment. Here in, or in Scotland, uh, we are out for an hour's exercise every day. That's mm -hmm. ended a little bit. And for essential shopping. We're a okay. small city. Um, Delhi is a big city. Uh, how, yeah. how, are things? how are things? Yeah, and Delhi is like, initially it was complete lockdown. So now we are used to live inside house because as you know that India and Delhi itself is a very crowded town. So very if you densely. go out, it's really difficult to maintain social distancing. Of course. So we still we are going only for essentials, so not it, necessarily for... I suppose people are wary of even though the lockdown has eased, people are a little wary because it's so densely populated. Of course, yeah, yeah, so. Uh, well, look, we're all, we're all managing different ways um, and we're here to talk about the... the we we to, start trying to live new normal. New normal, that's the phrase, yeah. that's the phrase of the moment. Um, of course, yeah. So we are both able to draw in some respects on a, a creative, part of life. And I'm certainly find that, finding that very sustaining, very nourishing on a daily basis. Um, yeah. You are currently, well, you've been working with your husband, Ashish, and we must say thank you to your brother-in-law, Al, who put us back in contact just, just recently. You've been working yeah. in, in media production. Is, yeah. that, is that still happening? Uh, right now, there is no work because of okay. lockdown everybody has to stay inside of course so there is no work. so uh, yeah we are just uh, doing retelecast our things and something we put it on youtube as well oh, so great well we'll put a link to that in i remember speaking with you both at the time a wonderful documentary series about river life okay. and another one right. i think in the making i'm not sure if that followed up but the great trade route that goes from right through Kabul and on uh, that incredible... The Silk Route. Pardon? The Silk Route. The Silk Route, but this, like, yeah. juggernauts for... So actually, it was Grand Trunk Road that That's begins one. from India to uh, Iran, I guess. Right through, right through, amazing. Yeah, it, it's trade route earlier. Right. So we want to work on that. We worked a lot, but uh, finally it doesn't happen. Right. 
Well, um, we, we'll revisit that another time, um, I hope. Yeah, sure. uh, media production, not so, but, but you trained, actually, didn't you, in political science and were a newsreader sometime in your home province. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, after finishing my post-graduation, uh, my master's, I started working just for experimental basis. I, I just went to uh, this Doordarshan, we called this uh, local regional channel. So I just uh, casually went there and I put my details there and they selected somehow, I don't know. And I started working. And initially I was news, uh, sorry, this announcer there for a few months and then I got news reading there. So I was news reader for two, three years there. And after that I got married and I came to Delhi. You and came to Delhi. Uh, so, and the rest yeah. is, is history, and give my best to the boys, of course. Um, yeah. so your, your home province, rural, central India, and yeah. some of that has spurred on your uh, creative side, and we're here thinking about colour and, and creativity and, and in India, and behind yeah. me, over my shoulder, I have a wonderful <laughs> painting which you gifted me when I, I left India, and I hope of course. Mm turn but it's a very I hang it's in my bedroom it's a very um engaging picture with its simplicity um do you want to yeah. tell us a little bit about the tradition of or the art tradition that that's from yeah what i gifted you is madhubani painting it's called madhubani painting madhubani. but uh, as we talk about tribal art uh, i was actually born and brought up in tribal area okay so I was interacted with tribes for a long time. So somehow it is always in my mind and I love the, their tradition, uh, their technology, the way they, they use that natural things to do, to, to live rather. So when I came to Delhi and I have plenty of time because initially I am not doing anything. So painting otherwise is my hobby. So I start mm -hmm. painting and uh, uh, painting what I have to paint when I thought so the first thing comes in my mind is this tribal art we have many kind of tribal arts in India it's Burli, is Madhubani is Gong so the very first thing I started this uh, we call it Burli art you see in my this shoulder oh it's, it's just the other, it's the other shoulder yeah so it's it's triangle figure in just a uh, brick, red brick background oh, or cow dung background, they use rice powder to paint walls. Ah. So it's, it's worldly art. And then... Yeah, it's, in, uh, it's in the exterior of buildings? It's exterior. Outside of the house, they paint to decorate their house that way. Right. And in worldly art, they use only two colors. So, but I love colors. I love playing with different colors and I like vibrant color, bright colors to use well, in my painting. I mean, I have to come back to this. Anyone who's been to India will just uh, have felt the saturation of color everywhere. It's, it's alive with color everywhere. The street, I mean, it's, it, it happens through color, doesn't it? But I love this painting. Absolutely. We have the blue figure in the front, which who would be Krishna? Is Krishna. Uh, we have the wonderful foliage around the outside, those nature colors, those block greens and, and oranges. And then the right. beautiful woman with a very uh, beautiful robe. And again, I'm reminded of the, the Calico Museum. There's embroidery and hand block uh, imagery right. on that, the inside right. of the robe. It's a beautiful picture. Now, you have one over your um, left shoulder behind you there. Yeah. yeah. And what does that show? That shows uh, two kind of uh, tribal art I mix it in, uh, in this painting. It's Gond art and it's Madhubani art again. So, and the colors. It's look my depiction. The way I feel uh, about colors, about things, and blue belongs to Lord Krishna. So, cow is also belongs to Lord Krishna. A very sacred so, animal, of course. Yeah. So I put blue cow is there. 
So you, so, for an artist, you've taken the traditions that you're aware of, particularly the ones you were born with, and you're giving something of your spirit into, into the, the, the... Into these art folk. Wonderful. Yeah. So look, yeah. yeah, as we're saying, colour is life in India, isn't it? Um, yes. And, and I'm sure you heard about... Uh, I don't know whether you attended it or not, that color festival of color. I didn't. Tell, tell us about that. Never been there. I haven't. I have to come back for that. Oh, definitely. You're most welcome for that. So festival of color is when weather change from winter to summer, mm -hmm. spring in between. So spring, when the spring begins, we have this festival Holi. So we use a lot of different color powder to throw each other. So family gathering and lots of laugh and lots of fun and Fantastic. it's a festival. And if you, if you be here, so you definitely wonder the way we, we play Holi. It's water, it's color, and it's like it's earlier we used lots of natural color with, with okay. different plants and uh, vegetables but now we use chemical colors so it is like uh, it doesn't fade out for a few days so people so, have this about them their skin and things yeah of course the whole skin everywhere I inside am, the eye <laughs> i am making a point of getting what time of the year is that it's around end of fab or march till it's mid march the, it's the perfect tra time to travel from the grayer day yes. of Edinburgh. I think, we, I think that has to go in the diary. Fantastic. Yeah, so this, uh, this festival shows actual, actual color uh, love for, uh, I mean, Indian people love for color. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, and the ceremony and the ritual and the festivals did chance upon the most colorful wedding I've ever seen. I, I wasn't a guest, but I was almost drawn into the, 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 the parade, the ceremony. The, yeah they have colors associated with them right yeah of course we have especially this red color for this wedding ceremony uh for bride if you see for groom you can use few other colors as well but for bride we prefer always red or shade of red okay and does that have a significance in terms of the bride red color is belong to purity sensuality, fertility, and prosperity, actually. Oh, that's a so, great combination. Yeah, so we use red color for that. And uh, if you see Indian women in somewhere that as a sign of marriage, Indian women put red powder in their hair parting and mid of their head. Ah, we call it bindi. Bindi. A so red that is very auspicious. Red color is always auspicious for uh, Indian uh, Hinduism, rather. And these these uh, bindi dots, they they're yeah. uh, that's uh, like a makeup now, or is it a particular? Uh, no, no, it is sign of a married woman. Uh, but is it a powder um, that people use, or originally it is a powder, natural powder. We made it with some stone kind of thing, I guess. But now we use all synthetic thing. Yeah. Okay. Speakers, rather. And so that there is the the wedding and the sign of marriage, and I think yeah. uh, we were talking. Yeah, we yeah, we have um, any many other functions related with this wedding thing. So we use different colors for different ceremonies. Okay, so so like we have haldi ceremony before. Haldi. Yeah, before wedding. So haldi is very auspicious. Uh, as a medicinal use, if you see haldi turmeric. What, what, what color? Oh, turmeric. turmeric. So a yellowy color. It's yellow. yellow. So turmeric is antiseptic. Okay. So if you put lots of turmeric paste in your body, your skin will glow and all the skin problem will go on. So before marriage, you are absolutely ready with glow and brightness with okay. yellowness. Wonderful. So we use lots of yellow color. Uh, for this uh, wedding thing and yellow color also belongs to like new beginning and happiness so well, that's why this, this color is auspicious again for us and we use 
yellow color again for marriage and other festival as well. I mean, I mean, and those are the rituals festivals, but really yeah. uh, we were talking before, I mean, it's, it's every day of the week, every moment has a color association and that implies how we might dress or what uh, stones might w wear in the in the jewel. You were talking to me about Hindu yeah. mythology in that regard and the days of the week. Without wanting to labor it, it's just so fascinating. Maybe we could just walk through the week together. So in Hinduism, color plays always very important role. So like we always connect all the weekdays, all the months, season, everything with color. So if you go through for this weekdays, every day is connected with some planet that belongs some specific color and there okay. is some special meaning of that color for that day. So if you wear that color, so that helps you to prosper, that okay. helps you, you for this good health, Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so when does the day, when does the week start in India? Is it Sunday or Monday? It is Sunday. It's Sunday. Yeah. That's so Sunday is, is yeah. as we know, sun. Yes. Okay. So sun is the planet that is the center of solar system. So the Sunday color is orange. Okay. That is adventurous. We connect as at, at adventure. Okay. So this is about Sunday. Planet, Sunday, sun, and color is orange. Orange. And the next day is Monday. Monday, yes. Monday, Monday planet is moon. The moon. Okay. The moon. So that and moon that is color. white. It's Absolutely white. white. White belongs to purity and wholesomeness. And when you say that and you give the day of the week that, does that mean that people wear white on that day? Or what does that mean? I mean, it's not compulsory, but if you wear that, so... Do so you want to be in tune with the planet. That gives you positive effect. Right, okay, yes. That day, a specific day, a specific color, so that give you that planet effect positively to you. Right, I understand. You're in in astrology, you can say, astronomy, we, yeah. we understand that. There's a balance and a tune to it, fantastic. Yeah. Well, we're on Tuesday. And Tuesday is the uh, day for uh, planet mars and color is red right and that planet mars and the tuesday is kind of sacrifice we understand that color is a sacrifice and uh, tuesday belongs to our god hanuman the monkey god the monkey god uh, Han did you say hanuman hanuman hanuman, hanuman. yeah Okay. So Hanuman is sacrificing things for uh, God Ram, everything. And this is so red. Monday comes to Hanuman and Hanuman color is red. So Tuesday is for red. And Wednesday, the planet is Mercury for Wednesday and the color is green. Okay. And obviously green is nature, In is fertility. Earth everywhere and uh, uh, green or Venus day I can say for us to begin a new things if you want to start some new work on Venus day so Venus day is the day for yeah Anu, uh, journeys and design sends out our monthly newsletter on the first Wednesday of the month oh great <laughs> that's why it's going on and it's auspicious it's successful. <laughs> of <Well>. course <laughs> Uh, and the next day is Thursday. Thursday related with the planet Jupiter. And uh, the color is yellow. Okay, so we know what yellow. So yellow, as we talked earlier, yellow is auspicious color otherwise in India. And uh, if you go with this day, yellow is a uh, color for enlightenment. Okay, and knowledge and... Knowledge, yeah. So yellow... Uh, we generally pray goddess Saraswati, okay. the goddess of knowledge. So the Thursday belongs to yellow color. So if uh, you, I mean, especially we used to do fast 
on Thursdays or Tuesdays or uh, Saturdays. So we have very specific thing to eat and wear. Ah, so on so Thursdays, we put this bindi yellow, turmeric bindi. Right. We wear yellow color. We eat all yellow things. And we pray banana tree on Thursday. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So this is about Thursday and yeah. yellow color. So we have two more. And then Friday. Yes. <laughs> uh, Friday planet is Venus. Venus. And the color is blue. You're wearing blue. I am wearing and blue. And today what? is Friday. <laughs> and tell me about blue. So blue is the color of nobility, mystery, and it's kind of artist talent. <gasps> nobility, mystery, and artistic talent. I'll take that. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so Friday is color for blue, <laughs> indigo you can use, and I love indigo color. Indigo is fascinating. I've been doing a little thinking and, and uh, chatting about indigo with some wonderful people I met at a conference, uh, Texto. And mm -hmm. indigo, of course, is green. It's a green leaf. But when you ferment it and dip yeah. the style, the, it's the blue. It comes out blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so blue is the color of Lord Krishna as we... Uh, and okay. see a painting and it it means immortality bravery determination so blue color is belongs to that kind of your yeah, yeah. and did you say a planet for blue planet venus venus is blue did. planet venus the blue planet okay yeah and sleeve sorry. and the last one is saturday saturday's planet is saturn saturn okay yeah and color is black Oh. So, black color. So, in India, generally, black is a negative color because it absorbs all the things around. Ah. So, we see black is as darkness. So, we generally not using when something good is happening around, some festival or this kind of thing. So, we are not using black color for there. And the planet Saturn... Uh, it causes distress. So distress is related with somehow somewhat black color. So uh, generally, we uh, uh, in India, Indian mother used to put a black, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, bindi in their so like with suit or something. Yeah, an infant's face somewhere so that. Uh, they can protect them from evil eyes. Ah, so the to defend from evil. Got you. That seems yeah. pretty sensible at the end, on a Saturday. Wow, what a what a! I mean, you've wrote, you've brought the uh, the imp, you brought that to life, and the implication is that you might choose to wear the color in in empathy with the planet and the energy, and and be in tune with everything. Yeah, and, and the, in this uh, conversation, um, it's easy for, for us to find out what to wear today. Because if you have a specific color, you don't have to find all the wardrobe. Okay. It's, what it's, do you want to wear? Just find a, out the <laughs> color of the day. And a happy wear it. coincidence, I've got a blue check shirt on. And anyway, I need yeah. to be talking about um, spirituality together. And I found a quote which you've uh, very gracefully allowed me to to read, and it's from Krishna. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. And it says, I used to worship the deity in the Kali temple. It was suddenly revealed to me that everything is pure spirit. The utensils yeah. of worship, the altar, the door frame, all pure spirit. Men and women, animals and other living beings, all pure spirit. Then like a madman, I began to shower flowers in all directions. Whatever I saw, I worshipped. Which Absolutely. I... Such a beautiful, exuberant, colorful yeah. quote. Anu, thank yeah, you yeah. so much for joining us from India and uh, helping us share the wonderful color and culture of your fantastic country. Keep well. Yeah, it's very, very nice talking. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bye -bye thank bye -bye. you. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye.